Welcome to the Love Local Chicago Land Podcast. Here we invite people and nonprofits from our local communities to share their stories and their voices. Through amplifying their message, we share their genuine human experiences that connect us all. Our goal is to make our communities more than just a place to live, but instead a place to thrive. Tune in to hear what makes our community so special right here on the Love Local Chicago Land Podcast. Hey, what's going on, friends? Jason here with the Love Local Chicago Land Podcast uh, here at Love Local Studio, powered by Love Local Media Agency. I am super excited to be here with a good friend today, Melanie Santos Stefano. She's a hardworking woman and a business owner for over 20 years now with Vicarious Multimedia and St. Stephen Public Relation. My friends, she, uh, me and her have known each other probably about four years right now. Uh, and uh, we've done some pretty cool stuff in collaboration in the past. And today, I have the opportunity to be able to interview her so you get to know her story. And also we'll talk about her new book, which I think those of you that know me, like I think it's pretty cool when I get to interview an author. I don't know if I've ever even thought I would do that um, in, in my lifetime, but being able to interview people that could curate a message to be able to uh, tell a story and to be able to help uplift people through their journey, uh, I think is pretty beautiful. So I'm honored to be able to have this conversation uh, today with Melanie. Melanie, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jason. Yeah. Very kind. Yeah, just super excited to have this conversation. A little intimidated because you're you're kind of a badass, Why? Melanie. Don't be intimidated. <laughs> you should read my book in full. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll work on that. So, uh, but I, I got I got most of it out of there, and I look forward to diving into it. But you, you have a good story, and I think uh, your story, you know, just to kind of continue to build up. You've been in business for over twenty years now. It was like twenty years a couple years ago, right? Yeah, vicar- no, actually 20 years in January. 20 years January? Okay, so okay. 20 years, that's pretty amazing yeah. uh, just to be able to go through that. And it, you're well-respected around the community. Uh, you work here locally and throughout the state, right, with with your business, helping support the local governments and I'm yes. sure other businesses and organizations that are out there with, yeah. with your uh, with your firms. Uh, and then uh, you're uh, now an author. You have to, like, add that on to your LinkedIn profile, which I would think that would be pretty cool. <laughs> um, but... Uh, I, I really want to, I know some of your story, um, but I really would love for our audience to get to know you. Uh, so let's start off. Just tell us a little bit about Melanie and what you want people to know. All right. Uh, well, I grew up around here. I just, uh, grew up in Deerfield, went to Deerfield High School, uh, graduated, went to UIC downtown. Um, after graduation, I was a social worker for a couple of years. I worked for DCFS. Not a lot of people know that. Um, it's I call it God's work. <laughs> yes, because um, it doesn't pay well. Yeah. It doesn't pay well, but it's also um, frontline work, like mm-hmm. boots on the ground with a lot of very hard situations. I love the work. Um, I felt fulfilled by the work, but some people are more are stronger to stay in that than others. And it was really, I was like taking it home with me. Oh yeah, um, Just the that. things that, that I was seeing. But I do keep the little social worker on my shoulder. We do work with a lot of nonprofits, do pro bono work. Um, so I'm, I kind of don't forget that world. Uh, but anyway, so after that, I took a 180 turn and went into radio and did that for several years before I started my company in 2004, Vicarious mm-hmm. Multimedia. Then you, you, with radio, which is yeah. uh, it's really where I would think like you learned a lot about PR, you oh, learned yeah. a lot about marketing, Huge. you learned a lot yeah. about business in that time. You were, yeah. what areas were you in? Uh, in radio? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I started in Decatur, Illinois. So for those of you that know central Illinois, um, people call it the armpit of Illinois, which is not fair. Decatur <laughs> is actually a really cute town. Um, I'm from Northwest Indiana and they call it the armpit of like North, uh, oh. North armpit of the Midwest, I think is what they call it. So um, we both spend time in armpit. Armpit, yeah, I guess <laughs> so. in armpit. First, first, first time I heard Decatur, Illinois. That's but, not uh, very nice. Yeah, sounding, is it? It's um, not. Yeah. I, I thought it was a very charming town. Um, I worked in a, at a radio station there, covered um, state government because 20, 20 minutes away is Springfield mm-hmm. roughly. So I met like people like Michael Madigan and George Ryan before he went to prison and Rod Blagojevich before he went to prison and Jesse White and um, state representatives and just kind of covered state government and um, covered the town and um, kind of prepared me to move into Chicago radio um, where I was covering, you know, local government, businesses, car crashes, whatever it was. Um, So, yeah, started in Decatur, came to Chicago radio and then... um, in 04, left Chicago radio for to start a business. 
Yeah. yeah. What what like made you like I'm gonna start my own business? So you yeah. have that experience, mm -hmm. uh, both small markets and large markets. Yeah. And Chicago's a I think you said in your book number three, yeah, largest Chicago, market. Yeah. yeah, Chicago's the third largest market in the country. So when you get there, you kind of feel like a big deal, which I actually write about in my book. It's when I got something called ego, which I got rid of. But um yeah. So but, uh, you made it, right? Like, yeah, if you made, you if it's Chicago, you, you feel it. like you made it. Yeah. I remember, like, for those of you that have listened to Shadow Traffic over the years, a man named Bart Shore used to, he's recently left, but was on News Radio 780. And I remember standing in his studio being trained by him. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, I'm with Bart Shore. I just thought it was a really big deal. <laughs> well, it kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of was. Yeah. <laughs> but he was amazing. Um, but anyway, so in, what happened was the reason I left radio is because, um, when I started, my last station I was on was w, uh, WLS, and I had a three-minute newscast, and I really loved telling stories, like news stories, mm -hmm. and um, I would read like a 30-second ad, and um, by the time I was starting to get a little antsy, I had one minute of news headlines, and I was reading two minutes of advertising, and I really felt like the value was completely diminishing from what I was doing. I was just kind of rushing the news and making sure that the advertisers got their spotlight, and it just wasn't feeling like I was giving anything good. Um, so uh, growing up watching business owners around me, my mother, father, aunts, and three uncles all had small businesses. These are the people I had Thanksgiving with. I would always hear these stories. And uh, it's one of those like, you don't know what you don't know, but you think you know it. So I was like, everybody else did it around me so I can do it too. So um, I went ahead and took a leap and everyone around me said, how are you going to pay for health insurance? And I said, I don't know, but I'm going to figure it out. And I ended up figuring it out after several years, <laughs> yeah. you know, struggling around, but yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't know if I could imagine you like not working and having your own thing. And I think maybe it's probably what got you for, through those first few years is it's, there's a grit and resilience uh, along with uh, the want to be able to help people. Yeah. Uh, I think that comes along with that. So yeah. uh, I don't know if I could see like just on the radio, like doing that. I feel like that <laughs> you'd be in somebody else's box. And I feel like there's certain people that aren't necessarily involved. Like meant to be in somebody else's. Yeah, I was you know, never really a good corporate employee. box. Yeah. I always kind of thought I knew other ways to do things. Sure. And sometimes that's well received and sometimes yeah. it's not. And so, you know, it's hard once it, you, yeah. once and you it, work for a business, it's hard to or work for yourself. It's hard to work for anyone after that. Yeah, for sure. That's I'm probably not marketable anymore to work with anybody. <laughs> so I better keep working hard. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it, I go back to, I don't know if everybody's built for entrepreneurship, but there's certain people that are not built for anything else other than entrepreneurship. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's something that me and you could, you could uh, go on and a whole topic on is just like, there's, it's a different breed of individuals because it's hard to build your it own is. things and, and, uh, to be able to, uh, go forward even when times are tough mm -hmm. and uh, so like I, I think of this book that, that you've written and it's um you, you talk about like six pillars of of life and i think if well like in in entrepreneurship and in life like there's pillars that you need to help guide you to help yes. us stay within your your lanes because mm -hmm. it's really easy to be like squirrel or to go on the <laughs> outside right or or to be pulled into something that maybe doesn't uh, doesn't fit your moral compass or whatever it yeah. may be right yeah. um so when you when you talk about like your mindset uh, about being an entrepreneur and you talk about whether you want to go on those pillars now or down the road like what is that mindset from uh, living a, a beautiful happy life for you yeah. Um, so, well, I, you know, I, I remember, so, so after, before I left radio, I, I did a stint on 102.3 FM. I was a morning show host. And um, I remember sitting in the studio and kind of thinking that time was going to be ending. I, I wanted to start a business. And I remember scribbling on a piece of paper, like, oh, like, this could be my logo. What would I do? Like, I would, I would help businesses. Mm -hmm. I would help, I would help the businesses that, I like watched my parents and, and aunts and uncles grow. Like they didn't have anyone like me that could handle communications. And I wanted to do that. So um, what I think about a lot is like, it starts with a thought. And that's actually the name of my book. Thoughts become things like, like a scribble on a piece of paper or a napkin, like an idea. And then it starts to kind of materialize in your head and you start like thinking it through more. Um, so then, so that's kind of the origin of the book. And then um, there's the six pillars you mentioned that I, I kind of live by through my businesses and actually my personal life, like my whole life. Mm -hmm. 
and they are, um, I can name them, <laughs> but like honor, you know. Yeah. Um, Walk them through and we, give yeah. us a high level overview and then yeah. we could dive into you know, to each of them as yeah. we continue to evolve. But yeah, yeah. Um, so honor is one big thing. Um, you know, have, be, having the opportunity to run a business is uh, especially for a, you know, kind of a hard head like me. I'm half Italian and actually I'm Calabrese and they're actually nicknamed the hard heads in mm -hmm. Italy. So I do have a little of that, like kind of thinking, you know, I know what I'm doing. And um, so I, I'm grateful and I do honor the opportunity to be able to run my own businesses. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, uh, it's a gift. And I, I have, I'm greatly honored to be able to do it. You know, I'm honored to be able to help our clients. Um, so, you know, honor is one thing, uh, honoring opportunity, um, being grateful for it, you know, being humbled by it. That's another pillar. Great grat gratitude, humility, um, faith, forgiveness, um, I missed one. Grit? It's, yeah, grit. <laughs> Don't forget grit. <laughs> I, I, grit's your middle name, Melanie, just so you know, at least to me. Um, so, okay, beautiful. So just to kind of recap, uh, the six pillars are, are honor, humility, gratitude, grit, faith, and forgiveness. And these are your pillars of life. These are you know pillars people could call them principles outside of this sure. book, but it's your guiding light, your guiding force yeah. uh, to be able to help uh, you do this life better because I think when – just prepping like life's kind of tough especially if you're yes. building your own thing like yeah. things are tough uh, from time to time yeah. so to have pillars and principles that can help you uh, do life better even amongst the shit <laughs> right yes. um it is something good for for any of us to have and for people to go buy this book right so i want to talk a little why is honor important i think first off because i think of honor i could think of like gold medals, I could think of, yeah. uh, you know, uh, purple hearts, those types of things. Why is honor important for you? Yeah. Um, well, from, from a personal perspective, you know, in the book, I write about people in my life and, um, I highlighted two people in my life that actually really honored me, um, honored me in a time where I was in need of them and need of someone like them. And they stepped into that role for me and gave me hope. Uh, gave me opportunity, gave me support. And um, so I talk about like that honor of just honoring the people who have, have shown you that mm -hmm. and, and, and then taking that and showing that type of respect. Kind of hear you say? Yeah, yeah. Like just yeah. respecting uh, what people need, just, just knowing that everybody is going through their own battles. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, you know, we talked about this before when we were just chatting, but um, everyone has struggles and, um, when you are able to kind of honor even the struggle, you know, like thinking about what you're going through and going, this is something that is going to help me grow, teach me something, even though it's sometimes very hard. In the book, I talk about sometimes um, I've had something I call like a fog, you know, like things happen in life and it's hard to see your way through them. Um, so when I think about honor, it's kind of a grounding force for me, like I honor the fact that I'm able to do what I do every day. I'm honoring the fact that I have a home to live in, um, that I have a son to love, a 15-year-old son that I adore, um, and all the people in my life that that I'm I'm fortunate to have with me. Um, so I think having that like pillar close to me helps to elevate me, um, especially in times that I feel challenged. So, so it gives you like perspective, right? Like life is tough, yeah. and you know you mentioned when we were talking and is um you know, there's storms you mentioned there's waves in life like there's always uh, another i just wave. had another friend say that to me too and i'm like oh yes like yeah. um you know uh, that, that's very much what this time here on earth is is yeah. it's full of storms and waves you're just waiting for the next storm you're just yes. waiting for the next wave yeah. because it's coming it is coming <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> no matter what right yeah. so I, I i but i really um i love how you're like well look at i'm honored to like do life and because uh, everybody gets life like we're lucky True. to be True. here <laughs> you know we're lucky to build businesses we're yes. lucky to uh, live locally and own homes you know like we're lucky to be parents we're, but sometimes when you're in the shit mm -hmm. sometimes it's really hard forget it yeah you can forget to it. know all the great things that you have around yeah you. yeah um, and it's funny because the all the pillars they kind of like fade into one another a little bit because um you know with that honor and understand honoring the things you have, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the people I write about in the book, in the um, the chapter about humility is a very person who was very close to me, who was a paraplegic. He became a paraplegic when he was 21. And um, thinking about that um, challenge, you know, and, and we're all walking around and able to do our stuff and go where we want to go. You know, we don't 
I don't have that challenge right now, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so that's another way to kind of think about it. Like just be a very aware, be very aware and appreciative. And you know, that fades into gratitude and mm -hmm. humility. <laughs> So. Yeah, no, I love it. Um, you mentioned humility a little bit there, yeah. but humility to me, vulnerability, just being allowing yourself to be real with yourself and, yeah. and giving you that grace isn't always uh, for yourself or for others isn't always easy. It's very hard. Yeah. Uh, what's your story with humility that's gotten you to be this one of your pillars in your life and, and, and enough to write about it in, in this book? Yeah, um, I will say, well, one is just like kind of realizing that we're all fallible. Um, we all make mistakes. And actually, we talked about this earlier about owning your mistakes. It's actually a growth opportunity if we think about it in the right way. But it does take actually admitting like, I didn't do the right thing here. Like, mm -hmm. I made a mistake. I, I should have done this. Um, recognizing it, growing from it. Um, one of the well, this, one of the big stories about humility in my book is when I worked in Chicago radio, I um, kind of had an ego. No, I did. Not kind of. I had one. And um, looking back, it just wasn't wasn't very pretty. And, you know, I was around people who were doing amazing things and you kind of get this elevated feeling. And um, when I really learned what humility was, was when I started my business, I left radio thinking I would just walk on a cloud and go like this and create an amazing business. And that is not what happened. Um, that is not what happened at all. It was really, I literally was knocked down to ground zero and I had to build back up from, from there. And um, that was probably the most humbling experience of my life. And I have no ego. I, I don't like being around it actually. Um, I hope for people that do have it, that they can see through it someday um, and come to a place where they realize that um, even the clerk at the grocery store or the gas station needs to be treated with respect, being humble and understanding that everyone is a human being. You know, I I see sometimes, you know, you'll go out and you, you're running and racing and I see a lot of disrespect that happens in those situations. Mm -hmm. Like these people are working, you know, they don't have a big Fortune 500 job, but they're working for a living. They're trying to help themselves. And um, I always make sure to just acknowledge them and ask them how the day's going and mean it. Yeah. And uh, show them that they, I see it, that they're a human being just like me. <laughs> yeah. we, we all have a story in our, if we really allow ourselves the time, like to get to know people, to talk to people that yeah. maybe look different than us or that are different than us, mm -hmm. we could realize that our stories are not that different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we might have big different factors, but when it comes to the root of things and how we work as humans, yeah. Uh, our stories are, or could be very much aligned. They probably have struggled too. Yeah. <laughs> they might be struggling as you speak. Yes. And you, you, I yeah. like to think that, that, you know, you really, when you encounter people, I, I really think about your worst day. And if you were there and someone was coming up to you and then you discard them and, you know, are abrupt with them and, you know, I need to pay for my gas, you know, think about like people could be going through something right now and either you could elevate their day or you could push their day down by not treating them well. So, yeah, yeah. You know, it's good it, to remember. I feel like that's tied in your humility because something you, you we talked about earlier. You're carrying it, and then other stuff in here too. Yeah. Uh, you carry, um, but to me, if if life is hard and you're going through things, if ego's there, ego is the enemy at the end of the day. Uh, it could tear us down, and sometimes yes. you don't even see that it's there. Uh, it's just there, and and life circumstances has uh, allowed you not to be able to see it at that moment. But it could be um, it could be detrimental uh, to your health and how, it, like mental, physical, yeah. all of it, right? Sure. We talked about th it being heavy. Yeah. Like if you're carrying something with you, if you're carrying an ego with you, if you're carrying something that you're like, I'm right, I'm right, but maybe you're not right on whatever yeah. it is. It's that's that makes life harder, right? Like it's heavy. Yeah, it can weigh you down. I think it actually stands in the way of your progress, like mm -hmm. as a human being. For you know, sure. We can all talk about business and, you know, moving up in the corporate ladder, or whatnot. But I'm this book is a lot focused on being a good human being. And it took me a while. You know, I'm not perfect. But um, kind of living by those pillars, I, sometimes you need to be reminded. Sometimes mm -hmm. you need to be reminded you're not rushing through that gas line and being abrupt with somebody because because it takes just as much time to be pleasant quickly and go. Um, so they're good just kind of things to remind you and ground you yeah. through our busy lives.
Yeah, it's needed. I feel like yeah. uh, gratitude. Uh, you know, we said it. I think in, in a couple of these, uh, when you can find gratitude when you're in the shit, <laughs> uh, there you're doing it right. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk to talk to us a little bit about gratitude and yeah. why it's one of your six pillars. Yeah. Um, so I, the story. So in the book, I I profile eight people, seven of whom are no longer with us, but people that really impacted my life and. Um, that, that, uh, chapter is about my Italian grandmother <laughs> who like spoke Italian in the home and she was just not simple, but just had a simple life. Like the house was literally a walk from the jewel and a walk to her church. And that was her world in addition to her family. And mm. every Sunday we went to grandma and grandpa's and that woman, I, I write about it. I would ran to the door. I was always first at the door and I had to go through her pinching my cheeks for like five minutes. And I was like, oh my God, I really want to get in there and eat some spaghetti, but I got to go through the pinch cheeking or <laughs> cheek pinching. Um, but uh, she just, she just needed nothing other than a place to go shopping, a place to worship her Lord and her family. And she had no frills, no nothing, but she was one of the happiest, most grateful people I knew. And um I think of that when, you know, in our society, we want to more, more, more. We were talking earlier about our kids wanting the latest video game and all the new stuff. And it's almost like you have to take a step back and think about you have the simple things, mm -hmm. um, a home, food to eat, clothing to wear, uh, people around you that support you. Um, the charity beneficiary, uh, one or 20 percent of every uh, sale of the book goes to Journeys the Road Home. And um, homelessness has become a really big cause for me because um, I do feel like without a home, how much can you really accomplish? Um, I had an interaction that kind of put me over the edge. I've always, you know, you go to the city and you see homeless people and it's very sad and you see them in the suburbs even. But I went to Dunkin' Donuts and I went through the, I was going through the drive through and I saw a man who was about my age and he had a shopping cart and all this stuff in it. And I'm driving around uh, the drive through and I'm thinking, probably use some food, you know. And so I just got an extra egg sandwich and I got a coffee and a milk and I walked it over to him. And I said, you know, I thought you might be hungry. So I just got, you know, double what I was going to get. And I hope you can enjoy this. And <clears throat> he looked at me in the eye and he said, you know, I want to thank you for your kindness. And I said, it's absolutely no problem. Like, please just enjoy it. And he goes... And I go, well, just have a great day. And he goes, you have a, a great day as well. I wish that for you. He was very well-spoken. And um, I think about like what happened to bring him there. He didn't, um, mm -hmm. he seemed completely like an, any one of us. And I just think that sometimes we forget that you could lose everything or something terrible could happen and you just have to be appreciative. You know, you just have to have gratitude. So that's a reminder. For what you do have, right? Like, for what you do have. Life's short. Like the things don't matter. Like I'm, I'm one for things. Trust me. I like things uh, too. I like things too. <laughs> yeah, I like things. <laughs> Let's get right. But at the end of the day, like well, I just I came back from a trip recently uh, with my friends, and it was like it was the small things that that don't cost any more. This, yeah. you know, it's a, sometimes we don't need those those bigger, crazy things, and we just have to be grateful for what we do have because there's there's somebody else that's that has a lot less. So, yes. uh, you know, um, we should be grateful for what we do have. Yeah. Uh, my favorite for you out of these, because I've seen this over and over with you, your grit and your resilience <laughs> uh, is is uh, something not to be reckoned with, in my opinion. Like, <laughs> it's uh, you, you could go deep for things because it, to me, this is my opinion, it's because you're very passionate. When you If you're in something, you are in it and you want to do the best that you can yeah. with it. But uh, let's talk a little bit about grit. Why, why is grit in this book? Why is it one of yeah. your six pillars? Well, um, grit uh, is something that, you know, I, I like to say that business ownership is not for the faint of heart. And you know that because yes. you're a business owner too. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's really something that you need to pull from within. Um, you need to find that inner strength. There are times where I do feel like completely challenged. Like how I'm, you know, I've got like, I work in crisis PR. Sometimes I have crisis clients and I have regular clients and I have people that work for me and with me is our team and um, everybody's got something going on. And it's almost like you just have to center yourself and realize like you do have the strength. If you're fortunate um, to be doing something you're passionate about, like I, I feel like there's there's no possibility um, that you can't 
look to find to get out mm -hmm. of a challenge. Um, I learned this from a, my great grandmother on my Irish side. I write about her in this chapter where she, um, she, her snapshot of her life was she was married off to an older man. She got pregnant. This is in Ireland. And by the time she was 19, he died. And then she had the baby the next day. And hmm. um, they had no money and no resources. In and that time frame, too. It's different than now. Yeah, even now it would be tough. But yeah. uh, back then, even tougher. Yeah. Right? Rural this Ireland, uh, before the turn of the century. And she was basically sent to Boston. And she was sent to work. And she was gone for seven years. She left her daughter in Ireland with her mother. And her job was to send money back to her family in Ireland. Wow. And I picture her you know, she took brave. A ship, yeah. brave. Mm -hmm. And uh, on a ship, she was on a ship for nine days. I've researched this woman. She's one of my next books. Hmm. Um, and I think of her being her age and the overwhelming responsibility on her shoulders. Mm -hmm. And I do tell myself when I'm particularly challenged, I think about her name was Marianne. And I think about Marianne standing on a ship waiting to figure out what was going to happen in Boston when she got there. And Talk about a perspective shift. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I go, okay, I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> I've got like all these resources here. You know, I've got a lot to be grateful for. And uh, I got the grit to get it done. So I think if we all tell ourselves like, there's something you can find something within from within if you really believe that you can do something. I believe you can. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And it, grit. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, and I feel like grit and we were talking earlier too, kind of coincide. Talk about the next pillar of faith. Yeah. Like uh, uh, faith and grit could go hand in hand because it. Can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk to us a little bit about faith. Yeah. Well, um, you know, faith, hope, like they're kind of first cousins maybe, um, I think we all have to remember that there's always hope, um, even if there's just a shred. Um, I mentioned earlier about uh, when I left Chicago Radio and started my company, I thought I would just, you know, hit it out of the park right away, which did not happen. It's, it's actually, I call it a brick by brick build, and it has been. Hmm. Um, really, truly, businesses that last are done that way, and they don't grow fast. Mm -hmm. uh, they grow methodically by building a solid foundation, and that is not easy. Um, but I, you know, having, I had faith. I, even though I was going through challenges, like I did have that, like, sometimes it was just a shred, a little kind of a, that remind myself that like, I can do this. I have faith that this can happen. I have hope that it can get better and I can grow this thing and, you know, make a living from this. Cause for many years it was, you know, working nights and running the business during the day, trying to make things happen. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think all of us have to remember that you need to retain that faith in what you're doing and whatever journey you're on and believe that it can get better. Yeah, it's a, it's a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. It's um, when you can have faith to trust that it's just going to work itself out. Like yes. it kind of takes a little bit off your shoulders a little bit, right? It really does. Especially yes. when you're in it, like <laughs> yeah. um, because it's not always, it's not easy. It's not just be able to build a business, but just life in general. Life in general. But it's just, it's general. meant, it's built to be hard, right? It's yeah. been built to have, uh, for me, it's, it's built to have faith in, and um, understanding that, um, you know, through your faith, through wanting to, uh, you know, we talked about earlier, like we can manifest uh, the things that and we that, want in life and we can help make this yeah. world better by, by, creating in whichever ways we feel called to be able to create but that's not always easy so having faith having grit th those things help well there's one uh thing that i this is when when you start a business and you you've done this how long have you been now so, so love low i mean entrepreneur since 2017 yeah. um love local when i decided i was like okay this is not a real estate thing yeah it, was, it all started with those videos in the community it was it yeah. was it was uh beginning of 2021 i remember seeing yeah. those before i knew you yeah <laughs> and it, being like wow this guy's doing great work <laughs> yeah well, it's so funny. i think on that like we just there's connections we, you were doing stuff in the community in your own unique way to help the yeah. small businesses yeah. for 18 years then 19 <laughs> years then you know um i didn't know what i was doing when i got in i thought it was just a branding play but then COVID kind of changed it yeah and i learned a lot i love that you know, i love that yeah. part of your story I will say, though, in, in doing that, right, like 
I liken it when I started my business, by the way, I was told over and over, how are you going to have, how are you going to have health insurance? How are you can make a living, pay your rent? Like how are you can do that. And I did have kind of the hard headedness. Thank God I'm a Calabrese Italian. I liken it to like going like this and jumping off a cliff. Mm -hmm. And I literally said this to people. I said, you know, I don't know how I'm going to get health insurance yet. I, I went without it for a little while. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay my rent. I might have to be a waitress at night for a little while or a bartend. Uh, but I believe I can do it. And mm -hmm. that is Bet probably the best yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. example I could say. Like I just said, you know what? I, I don't know. And you just said that. Like you kind of put put it out to the world and go, I'm going to do this. And I'm looking for the, you know, kind of the <laughs> the the journey to happen, you know. And, and when you do that, magical things do happen yeah. uh, in my experience. Fear stops people a lot when they get to that point, you yeah. know, so there's, there's a courageous, um, courageousness that's there when you're at that point too. Um, it, maybe some, for me, I could say when I was that's when like a naiveness, I don't yes, know if you've experienced I, yes, that, but ignorance and yeah, <laughs> well, I'm yeah, I'm going to do this. <laughs> it's easy. Let's do this. Yes. Um, yes, right. Yes, yes. Uh, so let's be able to come back to that. Um, not easy, not easy button. <laughs> yeah. So building things is hard. Uh, having pillars in your life are important. Uh, we've talked about some great ones already. Yeah. We talked about carrying things and how when we carry things uh, and uh, whether it's through a lack of humility or for whatever other reason, uh, maybe it's for a lack of forgiveness, which we'll talk about in this next one. Life is just harder yes. and it feels heavier, even though you're heavier. grinding through it. If you look back, right, at least I, I speak for myself, when I look back, I'm like, man, I was really heavy at that time. Yeah. I wasn't going, uh, it wasn't going the way I should have. It was, it was hard, right? It made it harder than it needed to be. Mm -hmm. So for you, why is forgiveness important? Yeah. So it actually, it's interesting because really the origin of the whole entire book stems from forgiveness. Um, so just to like a brief snapshot, but when I was, my parents divorced when I was in high school and it was pretty rough. It was pretty tough. Um, and uh, my mother, a few years later, we went back to Ireland. That's where she's from. And she re-met her old, like her love of her life. You know how sometimes you grow up and, you know, you're in kindergarten and there's that boy or girl that you mm -hmm. just kind of bought as a connection. That was them. And so my mother was not married and neither was he. And they reconnected when we went to the, on this trip. And uh, six months later, he came to visit us in the States and they decided to get married. And it was kind of a, okay, <laughs> they're getting married. And then the um, they sat us down and said, we're going to build a house in Ireland and we want all of you to come with us. And I was 21. My brother was 17. My other brother was 13. And we all said, we're Americans. We're not moving to Ireland. And so from that point uh, with my mother, she ended up moving and... Um, that was for her own good. And uh, I carried a deep resentment and a feeling of abandonment and, and hurt for a long time, for, for 13 years, actually. And I look back on those 13 years and really see how weighed down I was with resentful feelings. And um, it, it uh, stifled progress. Um, I think I could have done a lot more than I've done right now because when I look back on that period, I was struggling underneath that weight. Mm -hmm. And um, we had talked about this where, you know, I, I was single living in the city, working in Chicago radio for a part of this. And me and my girlfriends would go out and um, I had guys would come up to me and be like, hi, I want to say hi, but you look like you're in a bad mood or is everything OK? Like over and over. And um, I'm like, no, everything's fine. And everything wasn't fine. And it was showing on my face to perfect strangers. Mm -hmm. And I just carrying that hurt feeling for so many years. I just, I, it was really the reason I wrote the book. Um, and all, and all the people that came in are people that came in during the years where my mother was in Ireland and I hadn't forgiven her. And these were people that gave me kindness and support and um, filled in as stand-in parents even, or brothers or sisters, um, or people to look up to and emulate. And um, basically I finally, it was 13 years, and I remember the day where I finally realized that I had to forgive my mom. And I, I was more grown up, I was more mature, where I could kind of understand more why she did it. It was for her own personal happiness. And she 
um, took a chance where she she wanted to find a loving, fulfilling relationship, and everyone deserves that. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I look at all the struggles that happened because of it, and I used to look at them and be angry with my mother. And now I look at them and I'm grateful for what she did because it really, I wouldn't be who I am without without all of those experiences. And many of them were challenging. I write about things that people might be surprised about in the book, things that happened, um, but I'm grateful for all of them. They're now, they're a collective experience that helped me to be where I am today. And I'm a happy person. I'm happy with who I have around me as friends and family. Um, I'm just blessed to be a mother to my son. I'm blessed to be able to run businesses. Um, I'm blessed to be here with you because I enjoy you greatly. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's just forgiveness is something I recommend. Um, just if you're someone who has something weighing on you, like you need to do it not for the person necessarily. You actually have to do it for you. Yeah. And the growth that I experienced after that day, and I'll remember, I remember the day, I remember I was actually at Arlington Heights Road and Palatine Road in a parking lot. And I had just gotten off the phone with my mother and I had asked her to say sorry for leaving. And it was like 13 years after this happened and there, that never happened. Um, but I just hung up the phone and I thought, you know what, like I've got to let this go. I've got to let this go. That's got to be hard, though. I mean, just being like a teenager and having that happen. And you, you don't, even though we think we know it all as teenagers, like we don't really know, no, right? No, not at all. Um, <laughs> and then you just use your life experiences yeah. and, and, you know, go from there. It's hard. So I, it, grace is like within that. Like it's yeah. just, it's a part of our journeys, but it's uh, the wisdom in overcoming it and getting to forgiveness, whether it was uh, no matter how long it was, like you're you're lighter now. You're happier. Oh, it was so much you're, lighter. You're, you're in a better spot yeah. for for sure for you. You know, you mentioned that you, you don't do it for other people, but it, how you come off to other people could sometimes be harder, right? It, when you're not there yourself because you're you still have it in you, you know. Yes. But uh, there's a book I read called like The Body Keeps the Score. Like our emotions and our and the way that we process things very much goes into uh, everything else in our body and yeah. just it's it's just part of being human. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I, uh, I'm honored to be able to ha have this conversation with you today. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, this book, uh, these pillars uh, could definitely help people. I mean, you talked about like if they definitely people should pick up this book and they should, these pillars are great, but you're talking earlier, like people, if they didn't have the, these pillars, like just go find oh, yeah. pillars, you know, right? I, like, yeah. I, you don't have to take my pillars. <laughs> yeah. um, if they help, anybody i'm happy i've i've um i've had people read the book uh and and reach back to me and say that you know and i never thought of things in this way um thank you for writing it I, that makes me so happy that's why i did it um but yeah maybe you develop your own pillars mm -hmm. you know maybe you think about people who honored you or people that taught you humility or someone that exemplified gratitude that you can look up to and realize that you need to have that too yeah. So, um, and the others, but I think for the book, the book is about taking all of your experiences, understanding how they kind of all come together to make you who you are. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> and, um, you know, just honoring people. I, I the, it's kind of a, it's a memorial in ways to, to the seven people who are no longer here, but also to my mother, because they all gave me things. And I think all of us have people who, gave you things. I write about some people in the book that gave me not nice things, but I still learned from that. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just all a learning experience. I think we can take all the things and wrap it together and, and be wiser. Yeah. Life is a learning experience. It, is. it really <laughs> but, is. But to find things <laughs> that, uh, you know, the, your pillars, your principles, yeah. it's like you've done to be able to help, uh, guide you uh, during hard times mm -hmm. um you know is uh, life's a wave life is uh, full of storms yeah. to have uh, principles to have pillars to be able to go to i think are, are super super important to help people like do life better you know um so where if somebody wants this book somebody wants to connect with you yeah. where can they do that at? they can do it at saintstevenpr.com that's s-t-s-t-e-v-e-n-p-r.com and there's a button that says thoughts become things right on the Homepage. Sounds good. And you have an upcoming uh, book launch party. Eh? Uh, it's I, a, I heard do. it's the, the event of the year. 
Well, it's almost full. Yeah, that's, you that's, that's what I'm telling you. I I'm better do that today. All right. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah I, I, I put this out last week, and I'm like 80% full right now. Um, information can be found at saintstephenpr.com. If you click on Thoughts Become mm -hmm. Things, I made it a pop-up, but it's filling up. So if you want to come, you better register. Well, I'm going to go do that right now. This podcast <laughs> has got to end. <laughs> Uh, Melanie, I appreciate you um, and uh, look forward to uh, being at the book launch and look forward to you continuing to do great things. So, uh, and uh, keep uh, spreading love throughout the community. And so. I want to thank you because um, this is not just because I'm on it, but you are, are casting a spotlight on so many groups and organizations that are doing amazing work. I've seen your podcast and what you're doing is very special. Yeah. We, 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 we believe in stories and we, we believe in stories uh, that they could help us connect and uh, through helping us connect, they can help us become stronger uh, here in our local community and uh, maybe even heal with some of the shows that we have in here. So uh, we're, uh, my friends, we built this studio. I kind of talk about it before. We're running Love Local Chicago Land out of Love Local Studio, but we built it for you, like the creator in the community, the business owner that has a voice, the nonprofit that wants to help create a better tomorrow. We built it like this so that we all could get along on this ride and and this this adventure that we're in right now uh with with everything new coming out with social media and artificial intelligence uh, being a human is super important and our stories matter and uh, it's going to take a village to help uh uplift this uh in our local community so uh melanie's story today was just a, a prime example of that is like we all have a story and our stories are all unique in our own way but if we could come at it from a way of creating to be able to help uh, share a message that's in your heart to be able to help other people imagine what that world looks like um, so melanie i appreciate you today uh being on the show my friends uh look forward to the next time uh, support local love local we're stronger together peace